AJ. Hey, th hey David. <laughs> thank you for joining us uh, uh, to the It's to my the pleasure. Team. It's yeah. my pleasure. Yeah, we're looking forward to hear your story, your journey, and how you got started. It'd be my pleasure to yes. tell us. Yes, that's awesome, right? You know, and and you know, let's let's start with a little bit of background about yourself uh, and uh, how you got started and what problem that you're trying to solve. All right, how we got started. So I became a teacher like less than a year ago. Okay. And I started teaching because I just felt that it, it sounded like a good thing to do. Right. My English is pretty decent and they mm -hmm. offered me a job. And I started teaching and I realized that there is a huge gap between students and teachers because a lot of students came directly to me but through the intermediate of a school and they were like, we want to learn with you. Mm -hmm. We don't care about the school, we don't care about the brands, no, nothing. Interesting. And I was like, well, that's interesting. Let's see what are the margins, you know, in the market. Mm -hmm. And I saw how much the school is making right, right. on my class. I was like, I just started teaching. Mm -hmm. Like the margins are huge in this thing and it's a great opportunity. And then I asked how much are my students paying, you know? I was like, my God, right, right. <laughs> it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. And I realized that there's a huge gap in this. And it's not only, you know, in English teaching. I talked with other teachers. I'm like, what do you think of the school? Do you like teaching here? And they're like, nah, I would love to go on my own, but it's hard and the business part and everything. I was like, it's not so complicated, man. Right, right. You know, you can do it on your own. Mm -hmm. And then I talked with a few friends, you know, in IT and all, and we were like, we can make a marketplace out of this and really bring it on. First, we were also, forgot to mention, we were thinking about bringing a CRM mm -hmm. to the school I was in because their IT was like trash. Right, right. And we're talking with them, and we're like, nah, you need to have all these complicated things and mm -hmm. all this management and so many extra things which we thought are not necessary just to bring the client in. Mm -hmm. you know, just it, keep it simple. Right, right. And then we started building, well, 12 classrooms. Uh, 12 classrooms, that's fantastic. Yeah. And that's the name of your company, right? I mean, that's an interesting name, right? Can you tell a little bit how do you, how yeah, you get so to the name? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about classrooms because yeah. in Lithuanian we are classes LT, which means classes, mm -hmm. you know. And then I was like, classrooms, classrooms. That, that was taken, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, what number do I like? <laughs> I love 12. I just love 12. <laughs> and awesome. then I keep mentioning to various people, you know, 12. And we're like, oh, because you have 12 months. Mm -hmm. And that's like all year round education. I'm like, absolutely, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it so. Or like you have 12 classrooms, you know, mm -hmm. or 12 grades in a normal education system in most European countries. Yes, that's why it's 12th. There you go. So it, it sounds like, you know, your instinct was, was exactly. right. Exactly. number 12, exactly. right? So, yeah, that's great. By the way, 12 is my favorite number too, right? Seriously. For a simple reason. You know, I'm a huge fan of Seattle Seahawks, right? And they have this 12th man right. thing going, right? So again, yeah. Gotcha. So, but that's, that's a good choice in that perspective. And it makes sense in hindsight, right? So, right. Uh, you know, connecting dots in a different way on how you pick these numbers and you know trying to make some sense around the brand and whatnot that's yeah that's fantastic so you briefly touched on a very uh, critical topic right and an issue that we're yeah. trying to solve uh, as a society right you know giving something back exactly you know, teaching our kids or, or yes. people trying to learn new skills uh, that is really satisfying job if done in a right way. Absolutely. Right? You're right. And, and uh, when individuals who have a knowledge and a passion to help out and yeah. teach, and if you incentivize them and yes. uh, show them the right way and right approach, right? Absolutely. The, thing, the outcome comes from the right place. It comes from the heart, right? It not only benefits the yeah, teacher, yeah. it benefits the student, and it benefits the whole Everybody. Uh, community as Absolutely. a whole, up, right? Because you're right, like, you know, when kids or, or people trying to get an education when they're coming to school or uh, going to a class, yeah. uh, they're not going there just for sake of yeah. a brand. They're going for an individual to try exactly. and learn from, right? Exactly. And uh, if they see a value uh, to learn from an individual, yeah. and it's obvious they want more. Yeah, right? yeah. They want to have the direct connection, right? And, and, and this whole notion of uh, investing yeah. in a human capital, right? Yes. That is the number one priority that we as a society have to solve, right? Absolutely. So can, you, can you talk about that? What's your opinion around like, you know? Human capital? Yeah. Well, I think it's undervalued. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think that human capital is undervalued by a lot. Mm -hmm. Because I, when I started, I said, we're building a startup around education. Everybody's like, oh, online education. And you're mm -hmm. focusing on like making something. No, no, personal connections. Right, right. Why do you need personal connections, man? You got internet. Right, right. 
no, it's not the same. Look at statistics. <laughs> All right. The retention rate, you know, in like off online teaching is low. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to learn like that. I even saw this interesting fant like study. I think it was done in, with Koreans. Mm -hmm. So you had a baby mm -hmm. and you have a Korean coming in and just being with the baby. And after like three years, they tested how could he learn Korean, how fast. Mm -hmm. And you had three uh, sample groups. So one was where the baby saw the actual person for mm -hmm. one week. Then you had with Skype talks for one week. All right. And then you had where he just saw like movies and something like that. And the only one where he, you had substantial difference where the person was there. The real connection, you know, the human factor. Even even with babies, right? Who exactly. probably does not have the whole perspective of the how world works. Exactly. Like, that is a fascinating fact, right? right? When I read this, I was like, Phew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, now I, I see where you're going with this, right? With, with not just human capital, like human capital is just an aspect, the end product yeah. of what we're trying to solve there. The key ingredient, the founding uh, philosophy is, is a human connection, right? Exactly. And, and when we talk about human connection, the whole notion and the concept start getting so vague because yeah. of how the technology is evolved and how people are trying to connect with each other. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you somehow lost the gist of who Exactly. As an individual, are right. So you know, tell me more. How are you how are you solving that problem of the human connection? So I'm assuming it's not just online only training. Right? Yeah, 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 obviously. Let's talk more about that. How, how are you approaching this problem? We're approaching it by just getting the right teachers, you know, and just matching them with the right students. I see. And then students rate the teachers they like, you uh -huh. know. And we allow people to build a reputation because this is something I, I was surprised and shocked mm -hmm. that it doesn't exist in education. Mm -hmm. You cannot build a reputation, you know. Right. <laughs> like, you can be the best teacher in the world, mm -hmm. but that's in your direct orbit. Right, right. Outside that orbit, nobody knows if you're good, you know. I you see. go to a different city, you need to start all over again. Interesting. And I think the right people make the right mix, you know. And mm -hmm. I think in business and sales anywhere, you got the right people, you just match them and it just creates synergy. It's just it's the magic of being a human being, you know. Right, right, right. You know, just making us getting yourself out there, right? Exactly. Making it visible to everyone, like you said, you know. Back in the days, all the good, uh, uh, not just a brand, but individual yeah. traits were spread through word of mouth, right? Absolutely. And that stays within a closed circle. And yeah. it's not really exposed out. And not just for the benefit of the students, but benefit of, of an individual as well, because Absolutely. as they are uh, available and exposed to the rest of the world, yeah. they will find an opportunity to go out yes. and teach another set. Yeah, and yeah. teach another culture, try and learn themselves and help get better yeah. versus just working within the circle where, you know, your brain does not wire in a yeah, right yeah, way, yeah. right? So And we're growing like that, like a society, we're growing together, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Like, so you briefly touched on a keyword to me in a way, sales, right? And, and yes. I did a little bit of background and you know, research on you and like, you know, it was like, yeah, you have a sales background and a teacher's background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a Interesting combination, right? I believe so. <laughs> so yeah, tell me more about that. Like, how do you how do you connect these uh, two different disciplines, and what are the similarities, right? And how yeah. that has helped you uh, build the company that you have right, right, right now and solve the problem that you're trying to solve. I, I think it was fundamental for me to understand sales in order to get where I am. Awesome. Because I talked, you know, when I came to teaching mm -hmm. and I started, and I realized the potential. I just sold myself upwards, and I became in like less than half a year the most expensive teacher in my school mm -hmm. and I talked with every teacher like, how can you do that you cannot just get a raise you cannot just ask you know I'm like yes you can I came to my students they come to me you know and I upsell them on mm -hmm. more class I'm like guys we should do this more because it's beneficial for both right right and the administration like David how do you d you you cannot upsell I mean, mm -hmm. why can't I you know, and the, having a sales background really helped me to see the potential in the market that a lot of teachers, they're terrific at teaching. Right, right. But they lack the business side and just, you know, bringing the clients in. Mm -hmm. And this is something I really tried also to solve because I think it's fundamental, to, you know, ju not just to be a great teacher, but also to put yourself out there and get that. Right, right. Once you invest in yourself, like you, you realize your own potential, right? And exactly. And in the way I also look at this, a big part of teaching it is sort of sales, right? Yeah, absolutely. You're in a way or two selling a story about a subject that you're trying yeah, to teach yeah. your students, right? And, and, and the right way and the best way I've ever learned yeah. is when somebody comes and tells me a story. 
those things register, right? It's, it's an art of selling in a way, yeah, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, there's a synergy uh, and, you know, it's potentially, you know, you're, you're yeah. solving a much broader problem, right? And yeah. then, you know, empowering individuals to first identify their own potential, right? Yeah. And then lift all the boats together is the key to telling a much better you're story, absolutely right? right? And I think uh, that's, that's uh, very powerful. Yeah, very, I very believe powerful. so too. Yeah. Cool. Let me let's let's switch your gear a little bit. Like, tell me tell let's me more it. about uh, the company itself. Like, how uh, is it working today? Like, how being in a hatch uh, has helped you out. Like, what does the technology stack look like? And so right now we're still on the MVP stage. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we just we had a lot of trouble with right. development because mm -hmm. I'm not a developer myself right. and I outsourced everything mm -hmm. and then it didn't work out. And you, you know all the yada yada <laughs> right, stuff. Right, 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 right. <laughs> So right now we're at we're having a fully working MVP mm -hmm. and we're building another one mm -hmm. and we're hosting everything on DigitalOcean Atlas. Awesome, awesome. And how's that journey been, you know? It's been hard. I okay. mean, DigitalOcean has been the good part and you know, like working also on Google and everything, it's been the good part. Awesome. But then managing developers, well, I'm not a manager. <laughs> I'll tell you <laughs> straight on, I'm not a managing guy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, just do the thing, right, right. deal. Deal. Uh -huh. and it doesn't work like that apparently. Deadlines were not met anytime because I sold the product. I meet you with schools, you know, I love meeting school mm -hmm. teachers and telling them the story and it's just fun. Right. But then I don't have a product to deliver. Right, right. <laughs> and it's been really a trouble to get through the development cycle. In fact. That's, that's interesting and it sounds like, you know, you're build, building a new muscle, right? You know, and, and, yeah. also, and probably you can relate to the same uh, scenario when you moved away from sales into teaching. The first yeah. few months would have been hard, right? Building oh, yeah. muscle, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But once you get it right, you know, you know the trick, you know what things yeah, work, yeah, what yeah. doesn't work. And and I think, you know, that's probably the journey that you're on, like you said, yeah. and you start with outsourcing them, right? Yeah. And then, yeah. It didn't probably work out that well, right? Maybe I need to do it myself yeah. or have hire people. Exactly. Who, who can, you know, essentially are equally invested right. in the problem that you're trying to solve, right? So I'm assuming you, you have a team of devs that... Yeah, you, I have one guy. Actually. Okay, that's great, that's great. One guy's a team in a way with you. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're absolutely right. It's building this muscle, you know, fail, try again, and just learn a lot. And It's a great journey, actually. I mean, it's fascinating how much you can learn from other per people, you know, just right. like... Being around that, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, can you share some of the experiences or learnings or advice for the fellow founders who are trying to solve something similar, right? You know, probably right. they don't have the technology muscle. They have a great idea on the, yeah, the domain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, obviously every business that is coming out today yeah. has to have some sort of a technology. Absolutely. Whether it's a web presence or anything, right? Because that's how our world has evolved, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What, what are those, some of the advices that you can give to the founders that are not technical, yeah. but they need help? I believe that we have a lot of great like non-technical tech things mm -hmm. like that you could build on. So the MVP we got right now, I build it myself because I got really stressed out at a moment. Nice. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'll just sit down for the entire week mm -hmm. and I'll just figure it out. Okay. And it just worked. And I learned so much during that process. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't just learning the tech side. It was really learning about marketplaces, learning about community building, a lot of different things that if I wouldn't have started to build it by my, with my own hands, I wouldn't even realize. And now if I'm talking with my developer, I really understand it in a broader way and I can really talk you know, more in sense, not just around the topic. And I think building it on your own, you know, yeah, just do, do it yourself. You know, rolling exactly. your sleeves, get your hands dirty, right? gives you a whole different perspective. Exactly. And at the beginning, you don't really need the great looking UI, UX, you know, for the mm -hmm. first clients, you know, you just need have something, you know. Right, right. Even I would say it's not that much for the clients, for yourself, you know. Right. Really to inspire yourself and be like, I'm doing something. It's right. working. We got something, you know. Yeah, yeah. The sense of achievement, right? Exactly. Keep on moving constantly. You're not exactly. stuck, you know, and not relying on somebody helping exactly. you to and go forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, the takeaway is to stick to the plan, right? If you run into roadblocks, if there are things that you're not able to solve, invest in learning them, right? Exactly. And it's not that difficult. You're gonna find resources every single Absolutely. place, right? And and there will be teachers, yes, like you said, you exactly. know, in, in a different package, right? And right? You know, and when I look up, talk about communities, yeah. right, when you go ask questions, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, they are doing a work of teacher, right? Yeah. They're sharing their experience, you know, here's yeah, yeah. how I solve the problems and whatnot, right? So taking that back into what you're trying to solve is, is a nice loop or circle Absolutely. that you're closing. 
I would add that it really takes you out of your point of view and you can see some different points of view. Right. You know, and try to approach the same problem in different aspects. Right, right. And maybe, you know, creating an entire website is not even meant to. Maybe you just create a form, you know, mm -hmm. something and allow people to schedule in and just do it manually even so, you know, do it with your own hands, you know, you come back from work and you just do it. Right, right. You know, I think I think you're right on. These are some of the problems that we're trying to solve at DO as well, right? You know, right. people come in, you know, they want to spin up a simple website, right? Yeah. Probably WordPress and whatnot. They don't want to go out and start a droplet and find yeah, it. Yeah. You know, we came up with this notion of marketplace. Here's right. a one-click application that you got and, you know, voila, you have your site up and running and go from there, right? So I think technology is also helping yes. us all evolve in that yeah. direction. and and. The message would be, you know, don't be shy, right? Exactly. Look out for solutions. They might not be pretty. Yeah. They want, and it's okay. Yeah. Right. The key is to to get into it, and then see something working. Exactly. And and use that as a stepping stone to your I next totally layer. I totally agree. And I would add to that that you need to be able. It was a hard part for me. Right. To admit your failures. Yes. <laughs> because you know I was committed to my developer outsourcer mm -hmm. for like five months or something. So. And I was certain that it's the right choice. And at one point, you just need to say, you know, yeah. I made a mistake. Let's move on. Let's not waste anybody else's time. And let's keep moving on. Because right, right. You'll keep on making mistakes. It's a startup journey. You know? Exactly. It's exactly. the life journey. Yeah, yeah. And, you know? and that's, how, that's how all of us get better, right? You know, Absolutely. It starts with admitting the problem that you have and then try and solve it. That's great. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the future of the problem that you're trying to solve. Yeah. Like, you know, what would a success, like, you know, you ha you're working on MVP, the product will be yeah. out soon. I'm pretty sure it will be super exciting, right? What would that success look like for you in six months, year, two from now? Well, in six months, my success would look like we would be everywhere around Lithuania. Mm -hmm. And I would meet somebody in the streets and mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh, you found a class. That's so great. My kid is learning through there. That's and awesome. his grades became <laughs> terrific and he's so happy. Right or meet a teacher, you know, and just get the feedback of teachers saying, David, I never thought I'd become a teacher. I, I want to bring teachers who are not teachers yet. Awesome. Like guys like myself. <laughs> yeah. Who, I never thought I'd become a teacher, but I found love in it. Right. And that in general, the amount of teachers we would have would just grow exponentially. Uh -huh. And that would make me super happy. You know, we have the MVP, we have the marketplace and it just grows organically because people feel the benefit of teaching and right, right. giving back, you know. Right, that, that is such a powerful mission in a way, right? You know, in every one of us, there is, yeah. there is a teacher somewhere, somewhere Absolutely. Right? We're good at doing something better, right? Yeah. And, and, and first identifying that, right? Yeah. And then providing a path to actually explore that and having a platform. Yes. That's unique. That's unique. There are so many people that, you, you know, kids not, and everybody, all of us could learn from, right? And having yeah. that platform and then the exposure that they need right, uh, is a super, super powerful vision. Yeah. For um, me, you know, I had a friend and I was talking. He's like, oh, I would love to teach. Uh -huh. Just do it. Yeah. <sighs> no, man, may maybe later. It's not paying off well. I don't think there's money in that. I'm like, dude, education is the best thing ever. <laughs> right, right. You're getting the human connection. Mm -hmm. You're growing a human being, you know, you see right. him grow as you're teaching him, right. and if you look at the math and you're going for us, right, right. or not, but you know, there is money in that. Right, right. You know, and you can really make a living while being a teacher. And when I see teachers that are not making a living, but really scrapping and just trying to survive, right. for me, it's un I don't understand it. You know, it's, it's a problem. And it's not in, only in Lithuania, you know, for me, it's surprising that in a lot of places, mm -hmm. the public sector of education it's terrible. Right, right. And teachers are protesting, you know, Ty, I'm like, the private sector is there, you know. We can help you out and the market mm -hmm. will help you out eventually to just make a living and just share. Right, right, right. You, you're, you're absolutely right. There's a gap between the public sector and, and a full-blown private se sector and a school financially is so big, right? There is some, nothing in the middle, right, right? Where they can help people out, right? And I think, you know, solving for that problem in itself is yeah. powerful, right? Like if you, you know, let me ask you a more philosophical question, right? Bring if, you, <laughs> if you were to take, build this technology that you have right now yeah. and then take it out to another place in the world, yeah. just to benefit an individual, right? Yeah. Or the set of kids, they are probably less yeah. privileged, right? 
where would you invest and how would you go about that solving the problem? Where would I invest? That's a great question. In which country, you mean? It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. It, it can be country, it I can be, uh, you know, different study I, lines and... I would figure out demographics and where you have the biggest influx in kids mm -hmm. and where the middle class is just coming up and people really need that education. I see. You know, may, maybe Middle East, I okay. don't know, maybe Middle East mm -hmm. or maybe Latin America, because mm -hmm. I believe there is a tremendous amount of potential in Latin America. You know, those places where you have the kids, mm -hmm. you have the minds, right. you just need to connect them with the right teachers, you know? Right, right, right. That's, that's fascinating, right? So now I think you're pretty early in the journey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you share some of the other vision around how this business will evolve, right? How right. this opportunity will look like uh, for, for the market all up, you know, five years from now? Right. So my grand vision. Mm -hmm. So I would love to have an autonomous school. Uh -huh. So also owning the real estate mm -hmm. that anybody could teach and we have the real estate, you just click a few buttons, you come, you teach and everything is automated. I see. And the market regulates itself because I I'm a strong believer of the market, you know, if we allow people and give them the right tools, they will figure it out, you know. Right, Just right. want to provide the tools, provide the infrastructure and allow people to just make it happen. So my vision is just to have those autonomous schools, you know, which would be the best schools in town. Right without actually having no directors, no administration, no actually formal curriculum, mm -hmm. just people helping each other out. You know? That's such an awesome idea, right? Because you scale without heavily investing exactly. into the whole process, right? Once you have a model working, it is super easy for yeah. people to go take and run with it. It's sort of a franchi franchise way of doing it. Actually, things, right? that's our business model. Oh, is it? Oh, nice. <laughs> My goal is to have a franchise later on, like yeah, yeah. in the late 2020. Mm -hmm. If everything works out, you know, I would oh, love I'm to sure go franchise-wise. Because I, I think franchises are great. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome, right? Tell me, tell me something more, right? You know, what do you do besides Bes solving the problem of teaching, like, you know, what, what tickles your fancy? <laughs> well, that's a great... <laughs> I love gaming. <laughs> I love gaming and actually I spend most of my time teaching. <laughs> teaching, okay. Like, it's really my passion, honestly speaking. You know, like, I work like approximately 12 hours a day sometimes mm -hmm. and I come back and I just feel energized, you know, so nice. my day job is just teaching and when I come back I figure out a business and there's no real you know, in between. Also, VR is something that I'm super passionate about. I see, I see. Yeah, tell me more. Like, you know, you talked about gaming and VR. Like, you know, yeah. I, the first thing that came to my mind yeah. was, this, was this article that I read where actually parents were inviting a gaming teacher over to their home to help their kids uh, get, go up in Fortnite oh, yeah, course. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard like, that. And I'm like, okay, that is interesting, right? There's yeah, a whole yeah, yeah. opportunity of teaching. And going back to the things that we talked about, exactly. right? every individual has something to share right. and teach. And you know, let's you know, talk about that. Like, what do you, how do you see that playing out? I think in general, gamification is so powerful because it really makes storytelling uh -huh. really compelling to the young audience. Right, you know? right. And I think that games are a great way to really get to students. Right. And if you can teach gaming, you know, and just make that connection in real life, in addition to having a game that really stimulates, mm -hmm. you know, your storytelling animal inside of you. It's I think better. it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, just thinking through this and, and the kind of problems this will end up solving is, is, is uh, pretty fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your uh, user base, right? Are you just focused on teaching kids or are you getting right now, individuals who are want to learn new skills, right? You know, right. probably retired and like, you know, I always wanted to learn this. I never yeah. got a chance and... So right now we're focusing on kids because mm -hmm. that's a very niche and easy right. to target market. Right, right. So we're focusing on kids and later on we want to expand to go corporate mm -hmm. first. Oh, interesting. Because, I mean, it's easier to sell to them, you know, than to sell to the general audience. And sure. we believe that once we have kids and corporates, the ripple effect will go to everybody. You know? Right, right, right. And we just provide the tool, as I mentioned before, you know, and if you want to start teaching pizza making, you know, or something like yeah. that, just come on, just do it, you know, interesting. feel free. Interesting. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty interesting insight. Like, you know, the opportunities is besides just school, right? And then, and kind of things that you can master. One of the things that I was always thinking about is coffee making. Because mm -hmm. I used to make coffee and it's one of my greatest passions. Mm -hmm. 
And I know a lot of baristas who are constantly thinking about quitting the job mm -hmm. because they're not making enough. And they're like, mm -hmm. ah, coffee, I love coffee. But man, you know, it's not really paying off. Well, you should teach how to make coffee to people, you know? Interesting. Because I know people, I know a lot of people who will be really interested to learn how to make a good espresso, you know? Right, right. And you have the technique, you have the equipment, you got everything. Right, right. And you're constantly talking to people anyways. Interesting. Right? So it sounds like, you know, you're touching on a point where, where you're essentially making a point that even in teaching, we are going in a route of gig economy, right? What Uber yeah, and Airbnb sure. is trying to solve in a different verticals for teaching. If you have a platform where somebody does that for, you know, this for is sure. my gig. I can yeah. make really good coffee. Like, you know, yeah, let me yeah. figure out a way to monetize that, right? And absolutely, help a bigger. Absolutely. So I think, you know, the opportunity, you know, if I read that right, is actually way, way larger if done it in the right way. Yeah, which is a challenge we'll solve and work on that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. a great and a happy note to end on that, right? So thank you very yeah. much for your time. You know, it's been thank a pleasure. It was my pleasure. Likewise, good luck. All right, thanks.